What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today is going to be more of a vlog style video. I got a few things I need to get done. I'm going to try to knock them all out in one video. Number one on my list, I need to get this trailer hooked up. This thing has been parked here for a very long time and today I need to use it. But first, we got to see if this is going to start. So we got to get this out of the way so I can get to the trailer. Next, we got to load up the bike. Uh, I'm taking my Harley, which is about to be out of warranty. I can't believe it. But I've had this bike for about a year, and it currently has, what, 40, let's see, I think, I think it's got 43 miles on the odometer. Let's see. Come on, old girl. There we go. Yeah, she's got 42. I don't even know if you guys can see that down there. But she's got 42 miles on the odometer. Now, she was having some problems. It didn't want to start. It was acting really, really finicky, and I decided I needed to go ahead and get it in for some warranty work. Well, I ended up fixing it myself. It's the first time I worked on a on a Harley. I didn't film it because it was truthfully kind of boring, but I took the cover off the battery. I found out the battery sits down here. You don't have to take the side covers off. Just one bolt there, two on the other side. This whole cover comes off, and your battery is located right down there. Um, I put it on a, a rehab type cycle, a regen cycle, and it charged right up. And now she should start first try every try so far. I mean, I rode it to where it's sitting right now. Turn her on. Hopefully she's in neutral. And let's make sure, yeah, she's in neutral. See, fires right up. Not an issue. Put her in a, is it this one? There we go. Sport mode. All right, she's kind of a chatterbox, man. And uh, <laughs> it's totally different from that Road King that I had. I had a 22 Road King and that thing had a totally different sound to it than this does. Uh, but anyway, I do have a recall on this bike and that's the reason I'm taking it in. It's got something to do with the handlebars not being tightened properly, bolted on properly, I don't know, but something about the handlebars and it can obviously kill you. So I decide we're gonna go ahead and take it in and let Fort Thunder Harley-Davidson deal with that. But before we can even get to that, I bought a new hitch, not sponsored. Don't worry, I'm not gonna try to sell it to you. There's no link or anything. I'm just showing you something that I bought. It's my latest purchase, my drop hitch from Waysafe. I had a lot of you recommend this company to me. And I decided to go ahead and try it out for myself on my own dime. Um, this is a big one. This is designed to fit this big old truck. Okay, so for most people, you won't be needing one quite that big. We got two balls here, right, as we're supposed to. We got a two-incher, and then we got a two and five sixteenths. This is the one we're going to be using today because that trailer requires a two and five sixteenths. The two-inch is actually for my car hauler. So what I did is I got a matched set. Um, all of this has locks. Everything locks in place so people can't get into it. It's got this lock too that goes in here. You've got a padlock for your, your coupler. You've got your ball. Everything on here locks into place. One key, and they sent me like six keys, so I've got keys for days for this thing, so I'll never, I'll never be without. But this ball has a hole in the back of it, and you just line that hole up, slide it in there, you slide this in the back, and there you go. Just like that, your ball is now locked into place. And then, of course, you'll install this like this. I already know where it goes. I've got it set at one, two, three, four, one more. Urgh. Right there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you take this, you slide this back in once you get it, once you get it lined up properly. Just like that. Now it's locked. And you just take your cover, your little weatherproof cover there, and you slide it over. And now you're ready to install this in the in the back of your truck. And it's got the little scale back here, your tongue weight scale. So I know that I can keep my trailer loaded properly. The tongue weight will be accurate because you want between 10 and 15% of your total weight on this gauge here. So if you're 3,000, 3,500 pounds, you're going to want, you know, around 350, 400 pounds on the tongue of this. I really like this. This is really cool. I'm going to put it together and let's see if we can get that citation to start and move out of the way. All right, another real question. This thing has been sitting here for quite a while. It's time to get rid of it, guys. <laughs> it is 
I keep saying it. I just, I just can't bring myself to do it. It's not worth much. Carbureted. It takes a while to get that gasoline pumped up to the carb when she's been sitting this long and it's cold out. Come on, old girl. There it is. There it is. She's just cold. <laughs> she runs damn good too. I, I can't believe it. I shouldn't even get rid of this car, honestly. I should hold on to this. It's not worth anything. I doubt anybody really wants it. But it's kind of, it's just kind of cool to me, I guess. Nostalgic. Oh, where do I even put this thing? Oh, she doesn't like all these bumps. All right, there we go. We'll park her right here next to, next, <laughs> next to that old Beamer. Should we let it run? I'll kill it. Fire's right up. Yeah. Uh, oh. I totally forgot the inside door handle doesn't work. That's okay. This one does, and it's a bench seat, so. There we go. Just slide out this side. I've had a few people contact me, and I feel bad. If I hadn't got back to you, I've been getting a lot of emails, guys. And it's hard for me to keep up with everyone, but uh, this one, I don't know. Never mind. I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not going to try to sell you any cars today. Uh, we're not we're not done, though. Loading up the bike is one thing, but I also got to go check this battery for this uh, handicap minivan. I've had a ton of people getting a hold of me about this handicap minivan, too. Same thing on the SEMA Mustang. And I'm here to tell you, this car, I'll sell to you. I'll sell to anybody. But I want twenty-two thousand for it, and I'm firm. I'm, I mean, I'm not budging on it. I'm just not. I'm not going to budge on. I will keep it before I let it go. It's got twelve thousand miles on it. All right, twelve thousand miles. The damn thing's a one of a kind, and I ain't gonna let it go for any less than twenty-two. Uh, otherwise, the thing will just sit here and rot in the driveway forever. But this old van here, you guys remember how bad that battery was? Well, I took the battery out just to test that tornado. Uh, what is that? That Top Don Tornado four thousand, I think. Uh, and and I, I think it may have salvaged that battery. So we're going to go back there and try to grab the battery and see if it brought it back to life enough to where it can actually start that minivan. Now, the fun part, we can get in here, back this thing up, get her locked onto the truck, get that bike loaded up. And if you're wondering why I don't just ride the bike to the Harley dealership myself, well, the Harley dealership is 45 or so miles away. Uh, that's the nearest one. There's nothing out here, guys. There's nothing out here. And with a safety issue, the recall being on the handlebars, I'm just not, I'm not going to. And I'm not, I'm not comfortable going out and driving in uh, heavy traffic and on the interstate and stuff. That's just not me. I like to ride my bike, believe it or not, slow. It's an enjoyable experience to me. And I actually prefer to ride my motorcycle slowly. <laughs> I'm not a speed demon. I'm not out here trying to go 120 miles on my uh, an hour on my bike, man. I really just like to feel the wind. You know, 55 is about as fast as I'm really comfortable with. Uh, I got no issue going 55 miles an hour on my bike. That's, that's not even close. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, but I don't ride a bike to go fast. Uh, I just like to cruise, man. That's it. So let's lock this bad boy down. Hopefully we're on it. That may be close enough. Let's see how I did. I'm gonna say that's close enough, guys. Let's bring her down. Come at this. Urgh. Slide her over just a hair there. There we go. Hopefully she'll just kind of fall right into place. I have to give her a little little tug here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now before we get the bike loaded, 
uh, unfortunately, because of where my D-rings are, my bike's gonna have to go more toward the front than I'd like. I'd really prefer centering things around the axle, but not possible. So bike is going up front. It's gonna put a little extra weight on the front. You can see that we're kind of tilted like this. I think once we get the bike in there, I think it'll be enough, not too bad. Or you guys think we should go down one more. I think it's fine. Actually guys, the way the D-rings are spaced out in here might actually work out in my benefit. I thought, I, I never towed the bike in this, I guess. But anyway, we've got two up there in the corners, and we got two back here in the corners. So really, you kind of do need to put the bike right in the middle so you can stretch out your straps and lock this thing down. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna fire up that bike, and I'm gonna try to ride it up in here and get her halfway centered. We can strap her down. Once she's strapped down, we'll move on to uh, that minivan and see if we can get that battery brought back to life. Fire right up, man. Not a problem. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get this bad boy up in this trailer first shot without too many problems. Not too shabby. Hopefully it doesn't crack. No, that floor is sturdy. Well, I almost, I almost wish I'd run it up a little bit further on the right there. But I guess this is gonna have to do because that's where she's at and that's where I intend on, uh, on keeping her. I think that'll be fine, guys. Tell me what you think. This is how I've got her strapped down might help if we uh bring that inside though i got the green ones on the back the bigger orange ones are on the front and uh i strapped it by this piece right here i don't know anything about bikes guys so forgive me but it's strapped down by that they're relatively tight i didn't want to over tighten them and pop these d-rings out of the floor back here i wrapped it right here and over here i did the same thing over here just under the shock absorber there and they're uh they're pretty taut you can rock the bike a little bit and she the trailer moves the bike does not kickstand is all the way open so i'm gonna say that's a that's a win and if not well hell i guess that's what insurance is for right all right oh i forgot something so this truck is awesome because it has a button you can push to check all your trailer lights and your truck lights for that matter. And since we haven't been in this truck for a while, it only makes sense to just get back here and make sure. Left turn signal, parking lights all work. Right turn signal, we should have brakes coming on. Maybe they already came on. Okay, I think the brake lights, there they are, brake lights, they work. Go around, make sure all these other lights are working. Turn signal lights are working. That turn signal light is working. Reverse lights are on. Very nice. And then we'll go up front and she'll let us check the dims, the high beams, and everything up here as well. There's that turn signal. That turn signal. The dims are on. High beams should come on. There they are. Both high beams work. And that's the end of the test. So now we know all of our trailer lights are functioning properly we're ready to get on the road but not quite yet all right so back to this battery um this is my little top don tornado 4000 and this is not sponsored i've had this thing forever but it just works so damn well i love sharing it with you guys um i've had this on the van's battery i know this doesn't look like the van's battery it's so clean well, i cleaned it up you see i actually this is sponsored right i mean it's not they give it to me for free but i've been promoting them long before that because i've always used super clean anyway i used some of this to clean up the battery then i used some of this to clean up the terminals and everything and then i used this 
to finish scraping all the gunk off the terminals. And this is the next one I'm gonna try. This is a 2019 battery. It's been sitting in my garage, stone cold dead for a year now. So I don't expect that one to come back to life. But this says that it's done. So we'll go ahead and turn it off. Or maybe you push it twice. There we go. Now it's off and I'm just gonna move this right on over to the next battery. Right here, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I don't have any hopes for this battery because this thing's just been sitting on the concrete dead for a year. So I really don't think it's gonna bring that one back. We're gonna throw her on repair. And we're gonna go ahead and start that one going. There we go, that battery's going. Like I said, I don't have high hopes for that. We got my Foxwell little battery tester here. So let's go ahead and hook this up. And let's see, I don't expect this battery's perfect, but I'll be happy if it's just usable. Well, 13 volts? Hell, that's not bad. What does it say, uh, 660? Oh wait, that's outside a vehicle. I was using this on a different car, 660. Come on, baby. Uh, well, it's close, guys. 493 cold cranking amps. It does say to replace the battery. With that in mind, though, remember that this is the same battery that as soon as you turn the van off, even after taking it on a 10-mile drive, as soon as you shut the van off, that battery was completely dead. So the fact that it's showing almost 13 volts and it's got almost 500 cold cranking amps, I think that's plenty. So let's take it out to the van and let's see if she'll work. Well, before I go any further, I was about to pull this battery off and carry it out there. I want to show you the date code on the battery. All right, it's five of 2017. That's five years old. Uh, yeah, batteries just don't tend to last that long these days, but we'll see if it can get the van to start up and it can maintain a charge without, you know, going flat on its face. We saved ourselves at least $120 on a battery. This battery would be fine to get down the road for a while longer. All right, let's see what it does, guys. Battery's installed. I didn't tighten it down just in case. You know, it, it may not fire up, and if not, I'm going to have to pull the battery back out anyway. So let's just see what she does. Oh, I got to get this cleaned up. I keep forgetting I got to get this thing cleaned up. No way. No way. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah, she fired right up. Do we have headlights? I think the headlights are on. And that important window does work. It does. You know, this is another one. I have no idea what this thing is worth, but it's gotta be worth more than I paid for it. Like out the door price, which kind of sucks because I got it really cheap, like 300 bucks, buy it now or something like that. $300, 350 by now, but it ended up costing me, what was it, 700 out the door. Uh, somebody had taped this. That's nice. They put tape all over the mirror there. That didn't, uh, that didn't work out very well. Uh, okay. Well, it's an old van, right? It needs a mirror. I could go and I could spin, ooh. I didn't even realize that was, oh yeah, that's trash. That is absolutely destroyed. Well. You know, it needs a mirror. At $700, how much can I get out of this thing? Oh, it's locked. And that's why I kept the window down. <laughs> I put the window down because I, I just, I worry that some of these things are gonna lock themselves on me. But uh, you can see the headlights are working. Headlights are on, corner lights are on. She's running like a top, man. I mean, we, we need to clean this up desperately bad. I don't know if I've got time, so I may have to call, uh, I may have to call my guys from on the spot detailing out here. We'll shut those lights off. Does the AC work? Uh, I'm going to bet the AC does not work on this one. Cup holder. Every time. I get in something like this, man. It's been sitting for a while. I forget everything about it. Let's go ahead and unlock those doors. There we go. Do we have air conditioning? That is a big fat. No. No, no, no. I thought this thing had working air conditioning, guys. I guess I was wrong. She's not too shabby, really. She'll need a little bit of work. She definitely needs a good cleaning and uh, a little bit of attention. 
but still for running and driving low miles got a hundred thousand miles on it not bad for 700 bucks out the door and we didn't have to replace the battery that just saved us some money right there all right we'll turn that off since it obviously doesn't work let's go ahead and shut her down make sure she fires back up fires up not a problem not a problem at all Hundred and six thousand miles. All right, that's good enough for me. Any day where I can save money instead of having to spend it is a good day for me. So I'm gonna go grab me a half inch. I'm gonna tighten that down, and then uh, this is done. And now back into the shop. Ugh. I don't care what anybody says. I've had a lot of people say some nasty things about that Cadillac. How it's an old person's car. Man, I love that car. And don't worry about the windshield. We'll get that taken care of. I'm actually in search of a parts car right now. I've got a couple on my watch list. I think that's the only way we're gonna finish this car. Uh, well, <laughs> economically anyway, is with a complete car to, to fix that one from. The Aston Martin is still sitting here, man. I have not tried to sell this yet. I gotta get rid of it. And I say that every time, I just never get around to it. <laughs> She's sitting down here doing absolutely nothing except looking beautiful. I mean, she looks she looks really, really good. But I've gotta get rid of this car, man. And uh, for anybody that's interested, I don't think anybody is, but just in case, I really like $30,000 out of this car. And I think that's a really good price for this little beast right here. But anyway, enough of that. Let me grab my half inch wrench. We'll go tighten up that battery. And then we could take this bike and drop it off at Harley Davidson. All right, we made it. And we're at the Harley Davidson store. This is Fort Thunder Harley Davidson in Moore, Oklahoma. And uh, this is where I actually bought my first bike from. It was a Harley Davidson Sportster 1200. And then I ended up buying my 22 Road King from uh, the Harley Davidson store off of Council Road in Oklahoma City. And now we're back. This is where I'm gonna bring this thing to get the, uh, the, the warranty work, recall work done. Um, I'm gonna unload this thing real quick. We'll get it out of here. See how long it's gonna take before we can pick it up. All right, guys, so we just got out of the service department. They said they're gonna let us know by morning about how long it's gonna take to get the parts in to fix it. So I guess what we'll do is we'll get, we'll get this trailer home and then we'll just come back when it's time to pick up the Harley and hopefully everything's good or, or I might sell it. I don't know. Maybe I'll find out what they'll offer me for it. Maybe I'll just leave the damn thing here and sell it to them. Well, unfortunately, that did not work out the way I anticipated. It is the following afternoon, and Harley-Davidson called me and said the part is on back order to fix the handlebars. Apparently, it has something to do with a, uh, a weld or two on the handlebars, and it's like a Vietnamese company or something, and the welds snap. And when they snap, well, it's a bad day. So um, at this point, there's really not much I can do. They said the part should be in somewhere around March 19th yeah well it's february 24th that's a long time the bike as it turns out is only six months old i bought it in six of 22 so i've had it a lot less than i than i thought i did um six of 22 it's got a recall i cannot use it i mean i can but you risk the welds breaking and then you could die so that that's kind of sketchy so i guess i'm just gonna leave it there and we'll do an update video whenever it finally comes back. Or who knows, maybe it's a lemon law. I did a little bit of research into that. And if they keep it over 30 days, then I can file lemon law on the bike. And I can actually recoup all of my money minus interest paid on the loan. So there's another idea. I can get about $2,800 back that I paid into that bike. That could... Well, that could be kind of nice. Anyway, drop your comments below and tell me what you guys think. Hope you enjoyed the little vlog we did. Um, if you did, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you all very soon in the next one.